Well, I won't back down. No, I won't back down. Okay, until the end of the hour, Congressman Ron Paul joins us, and there is so much to talk about with the congressman. Of course, his son, uh, Rand Paul, now uh, the junior senator from Kentucky. And we're very excited to have him here with us uh, today from his Lake Jackson office. Congressman, uh, uh, Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Same to you. Uh, there's so much to talk about here. Uh, out of the gates, uh, you're now the chairman of that banking subcommittee dealing with the Federal Reserve, and it couldn't be a more perfect time as the New York Times announces the federal government is preparing to basically take the states in under receivership uh, and their bankruptcy. And as the Chinese uh, openly say that it's time for the dollar to not be the world reserve currency, can you speak to your concerns? A few years ago, you said something big is about to happen. Are, are we now on the cusp of that? We, we certainly are, and uh, it's going to get a lot worse. Even though we had this major crisis starting in 07, 08, I thought that was just the beginning because the real crisis comes with uh, with the dollar, when people lose confidence in the dollar. The dollar doesn't deserve confidence that it has. But you can put confidence in something that isn't real if you're deceived. And people are deceived that we are very wealthy and we have a great uh, military and therefore we can trust the United States uh, because of our past performances. But eventually that is eroded and uh, people will reject it. And I think that we're witnessing that with the Chinese. The Chinese have, uh, sadly, I guess, in a way, they have become more capitalistic than ours. I don't care about them becoming more capitalistic, but I don't like the idea that we become more militaristic and more socialistic. That's what's so bad. But they they have their problems in China, but just think of what they've done. They produce and they save money. They take the money and they buy up resources around the world. They buy gold. They're a wealthy country. They loan us all this money. They're in the driver's seat. Don't you think that uh, if you or I or any American was involved in that, we wouldn't be wanting to just be taking paper money that they know is going to depreciate. There would be a limit. And I think we're at that point. And when that happens, that will be a major event when when uh, the world rejects the dollar. So uh, when it comes and how it comes and how quickly it comes, those are still unknowns. But it will come, and I think we're starting it, uh, to see it happen right now. Absolutely. Congressman, uh, as a uh, doctor, as a congressperson, as someone who's been on the banking committees for many years and uh, studied Austrian economics, for those that don't know, uh, comparing our situation to the Weimar Republic, I see a lot of similarities. And we're already seeing inflation in commodities and, and inflation in food. Uh, what is the basic time frame that you see currently? And, and, and for those that don't know, what does dollar devaluation and the dollar losing world reserve currency status mean for people? Well, it means higher prices and eventually higher interest rates, which means higher prices again. Uh, but... Uh the government always reports statistics that are deceiving, and they they tell us that inflation is like one and a half, two percent. And yet, if you talk to the average person, they know that price is going up. And you're right about the commodities. There was a report yesterday. I think it was the S and P commodity index for last year. A, a whole group of commodities it was up at 24 uh, percent. That's huge, and uh, you can't have that and not have that translate into. Uh, you know, day-to-day -day living. And people know this, the energy prices are, are going to go up, and it wouldn't take much to push that oil up over $100. It's uh, bouncing around there already, and which means the standard of living goes down. You know, with if an individual borrows and uh, they get into debt, but they live high on the hog and they buy more cars than they need and have a fancy house, and their job is just marginal, but if they lose their job or prices go up, they get wiped out, and they have to, in order to get back on their feet again, they have to work harder and spend less. It's a little diff different with a country because they have this printing press, and they're able to tax people, but there is a limit. But the economic law is the same for the country as it is for the individual. The country eventually has to live beneath its means, and that's what we're witnessing now. And it usually hits some people more than others. So the middle class and the poor get hit the first. They lose their jobs, and they're hurt the most through the inflation. The very wealthy, actually, there's a transfer of wealth. Uh, this has been argued by Austrian uh, economists for, for decades, that when you destroy a currency, it erodes the value of the currency, but the middle class suffer the most, and the wealth is accumulated uh, by the very rich. And, and we see that. We're seeing, we're seeing
seeing that, and what does it do? It drives up resentment. You know, and if, we, if they don't fully understand this, the middle class who's getting wiped out, they only have anger, and they might strike out at everybody who has wealth rather than the wealth that has been accumulated because of the government programs. And the social engineers, as you know, uh, Dr. Paul, Congressman, uh, they're fully aware of that, the pressure from above and below. And so right when they got rid of the Glass-Steagall 11 years ago, we start seeing RAND Corporation reports. We start seeing Department of Defense reports saying we've got to basically set up a police state because there's a danger of social unrest coming uh, because of the dwindling middle class. And now we see a British Ministry of Defense report saying the same thing in 2000. 2007, and lo and behold, now Homeland Security is putting in, in 9,000 locations, telescreens, saying watch your neighbors. Uh, with, three new videos were released yesterday, and frightening videos by Homeland Security airing on TV. They're up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com if listeners want to see it or if the congressman hasn't seen it. And it's got people in shopping malls and on the streets, and it shows DHS, TSA on the streets searching people, and it says we're going to protect you, but we need you to watch your neighbors. I, I mean, clearly they're trying to to bring in an authoritarian system, not for Al Qaeda or these overseas reported threats, uh, but they're now shifting it over to domestic groups. And we saw that attempt to attack conservatives and libertarians and yourself and myself and even Sarah Palin and Rush Limbaugh and talk radio and the First Amendment after the tragic shooting. So uh, uh, can you speak to uh, that, sir, and this, and, and, and this conscious movement towards authoritarianism? Well, there, there's no doubt about it, and uh, you're absolutely right about uh, the uh, disruption that that comes to the communities because uh, it, it is there. Most major changes occur, you know, domestically. You know, we take an oath of office to obey the Constitution and defend it against enemies, uh, foreign and domestic. Well, you know, I usually make that point, and even in the very, very patriotic uh, crowds and veterans, which you think would be more hawkish, if you emphasize, you know, the domestic threat, they understand this. So, uh, but I think I think we're actually winning this argument about this need for militarism around the world to protect uh, ourselves, and that we have to worry about domestically because people are getting tired of having somebody from the government check every single single thing. You know, back again to China, uh, you can start businesses easier in China than here. So uh, people who have land, uh, people who want to start a business, uh, people who have to pay these high taxes and and uh, pay for all these regulations, they're, they're starting to realize this. So uh, I, I, uh, I think there's a healthy uh, resistance developing. But like you point out, there there is some danger here, and that is, of course, if we get people to understand where the cause comes from, that we might be able to uh, prevent this. See, the one thing, the one coalition that we should build, uh, we talk a lot about the poor, the poor getting poorer and the middle class being wiped out, but the left uh, always thinks, well, the answer to that is just more transfer of wealth. But we have to get them to understand that the reason this happens is because government is too big, even though they argue for government programs. Uh, the government is too big. They argue for these programs, and guess who lost their homes? The rich got richer, and the poor people lost their homes because of this program. But the big, the big, uh, the other big issue is to make sure that people know that uh, you know uh, corporatism is not free market economics and. And that's a misunderstanding. Well, that was my my other point, and I'm glad you got into that uh, because we're of the same mind because we've studied history. But but quantify that for for listeners who may be new: the ultra robber baron, non free market crony capitalist always, as Carol Quigley said at Georgetown, Bill Clinton's mentor, lobby for authoritarianism, whether it's right wing, left wing, fascist, socialist, communist, because they create this big pool of collectivized wealth, and they take it offshore. And now the ultra-rich are trying to sell the poor people who are losing their jobs on higher taxes and looting their neighbor who's got more money than them, uh, selling them the lie that that's going to give them a good economy when it's freedom that's going to give them a future. Yeah, and then they lump everybody together. If you are a businessman, and there are a lot of very decent, wealthy businessmen in this country that earned it and didn't have to live off the government, but they get lumped into that. So when there's unrest... 
uh, the the uh, everybody still lumped together, whether they're the they're the people who uh, lived off the government, lived off the taxpayer, or whether they were successful because they delivered good products to consumers at good prices. Uh, so there's a big difference there. And, you know, I've had some discussion with Ralph Nader, and I'm, I imagine there are a few of your listeners that can't stand Ralph Nader, but I like to talk to him because we do come up with some agreements on this. I mean, he hates this corporatism, and uh, he doesn't like the war and things. So I work with people who can uh, agree with me on some of this. So this is what we have to do is, is uh, make sure our definitions are clear. Then we have a better chance at solving these problems. Very well said. Uh, Congressman, uh, we're seeing riots all over the world over global inflation driven by the devaluation of the dollar and other fiat currencies. You've, you've been mentioning unrest uh, here, and uh, clearly we're seeing more and more signs of that here. And uh, I remember you back in, 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 in Austin giving a speech th th uh, that I uh, attended seven years ago. We were talking about it during the break when you first got on, and you warned that when the empire starts collapsing, there's two ways to go. It's either recognize that big government breeds corruption and go the opposite direction towards liberty, but that more often than not, instead, the government's going to sell even more of the same uh, as the solution. And so now is the time to, 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 to get this out to people. I mean, this is a life and death situation for our republic, is it not? Yes, and, and it's hard teaching people uh, some of these lessons in the midst of a crisis, uh, because then, uh, and you can understand the emotions, you know, when law and order breaks down, uh, most people say, well, this just Quit the killing. Calm down things. You better bring more police in. And that's, you know, a pretty natural response, but not realizing that uh, we have had too many policemen already and too many bureaucrats and too much federal government, too much taxes and all that. So it, it, it to me, the earlier the education occurs, the better I think people have to know and understand why it's in their best interest, uh, that, uh, that, that, that the free market works better. People think that you have to sacrifice and all this. I don't think you have to sacrifice a thing, a freedom, freedom. If you get your freedom, you don't have to sacrifice anything because uh, you you have your incentives. You can take care of yourself a lot better than the government, and uh, and that, that's a system that has worked. And unfortunately, we're about to give it up, and that's why I fear the day when uh, law and order mm -hmm. breaks down. But or questioning whether there will be riots in our streets like there have been overseas already. And I suspect that the American people are like other people. And even in the 60s, we had our riots and our shares of, uh, of problems here. So people will uh, act in a violent manner. And uh, that's, uh, yes, sir. that's up for grabs. And, you know, all factions then will be looking to get the powers and the strings of, of government. So uh, we, we have a big job ahead of us. So we're going into some very stormy waters? No doubt. It's coming. It's Congressman, uh, 